The first thing we want to do is tape down our watercolor paper. And I just use painter's tape. We want to have a piece of paper that's big enough to accommodate whatever image we're stamping down. And I'm planning on using one of the new Fruitful Harvest stamps. So I want to make sure I have enough. room on the watercolor paper to accommodate that. Anytime you're taping or anytime you're doing a watercolor, um, you want to make sure that you tape down your paper on all four sides if it's going to be a very wet watercolor. And in this one, we're using a number of different techniques to age our paper and whatnot. So it's going to be very wet at certain times and I'm taping it down so that the paper doesn't get totally warped and all out of shape. The tape will hold it in place, okay? So again, that's just regular painter's tape. I use Scotch Blue 2090. It's just the original painter's tape and I'm just taping it down to anything. This is basically the backside of a paper pad that I put a little bit of, um, contact paper that look like marble so it looks fancy but it's not okay i'm going to set that aside and the next thing i'm going to do is take my classic value <laughs> instant coffee it doesn't matter i always go with generic if you can find it at the dollar store get it at the dollar store i mean you're doing it crafts it doesn't have to be tasty coffee you know so i'm just going to start off with that much it's not probably like a tablespoon. And I've got some hot water here. I'm gonna start off with less water to get really concentrated because I want this to have some good color to it. So that's, yeah, that's pretty good color. I'm gonna draw up a little bit into my pipette here, kind of stash it and save it, but I'm gonna dilute it just a smidge more. Okay, and then from here, I'm just gonna pour in some of my instant coffee into a little mini mister or a little spray bottle. The hot water is only important because it makes the crystals dissolve more quickly. So don't feel like I don't have any hot water available. It's, it's all good, promise. Okay, so if you don't wanna get your work surface dirty, make sure you lay down like a plastic bag or a towel or whatever you want. And I have a kind of fancy desk just because I stamped it with all the beautiful IOD. Um, shiplap stamp on there. And then I'm just gonna start spritzing the coffee right onto my watercolor paper. And that's just gonna give me a really nice old paper feeling. And you could do this even more concentrated if you wanted to, you know? If you wanted to have this like super, super dark and aged, you really could. The other thing that you could do is you could take a big paint, a big paintbrush. If you didn't want little splatters, and just going back and forth, you can get rid of all of the splatter that you got from the spray bottle, but still have the aged effect. And then if you want to come in, this is why I saved the pipette of more concentrated. I kind of squeeze and almost splat. It looks like somebody spilled their coffee and you know, you're just kind of getting a little bit on there. The other thing I love is a toothbrush for splatter. Just come in, dip, tap off excess, kind of come in. Oops, I got a major bleed there and kind of just give myself a little bit of splatter. Then I can control a little bit where it goes 
it's really up to you guys, seriously. The other thing you can do is with a smaller toothbrush, a uh, smaller paintbrush, come in and just splat with the paintbrush. This is a bit more controlled. Some of these I'm not crazy about, so I'm just gonna kinda, before it dries, kind of brush off the excess. I don't really like the pull up spots. They kinda pulled too much, so I'm gonna come in with my paintbrush and do some more deliberate splatter. Now everybody splats a little bit differently, okay? Some have to tap over their finger, some have to tap directly onto the brush. I have a pretty strong pointer finger, so just tapping on this really hard, I get what I'm going for, okay? And then you just leave this dry. If you can, it's a good idea to stick it out in the sun. It looks really awesome out in the sun. Um, but if you want, you can always use a heat tool and kind of speed up the process too, okay? So we'll come back in a bit once this paper is dry. All right, so we have some really cool blossoms that kind of happened in there. That's basically whenever water hit the coffee, created some really interesting petals of color. I want a little more concentrated in here. So I'm just gonna take my coffee dye and add some more of the crystals in just to get a little bit more concentrated. And that way we get a different value than what we already have laying down. Okay, I'll dry that up. Okay, so our next step is to grab a stamp and I'm using the new Fruitful Harvest. Um, in particular, I'm gonna use this oak leaf and this smaller pumpkin up in the left corner. And on top of that, we want ultra fine detail embossing powder. So like the really, really thin stuff, nothing that's got like a coarse salt like feel to it. And then you also need clear embossing ink in an ink pad as well, okay? So I'm always kind of crossing my fingers that my ink pad is good and juicy. But it's always a good idea to like refill it before you use it. I just moved so all my stuff is all over the place right now. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and stamp that down. Kinda hard to see if you even manage to get anything on there. Quickly sift on your clear embossing powder. Be like really liberal in your application of the powder because you're just gonna sift it right back in to the bottle anyway. So I just grabbed myself a piece of scratch paper, kind of take and tap off the excess. I can see that I have, there's the right lighting, I can see that I've got the powder on my oak leaf, okay? Before you go and get crazy, take your excess, sift it right back into the jar, and cap it. Do this every time. Don't try to stamp a bunch of times and then put your powder on all at the same time. Your ink will likely dry up before you even get a chance to put powder on it, if that happens. Okay, so we're gonna get a little closer here at an angle. And what you're gonna see is the powder melt as I use a heat tool. You wanna make sure that you're using a heat tool that's hot enough 
This is an embossing heat tool. So it's actually meant for embossing. Now, I can see on the camera that a shimmer is literally getting captured on film, so that's fantastic. That's how I know that my embossing powder is melted all the way, okay? So I can turn off my heat tool. Be careful, the head of the heat tool is really hot. And I apologize if you've done embossing before and you're like, Golly, I know how to do this. This is really just for those of you guys who have never really done it before. Okay, so I have that nice, slick, clear image of my oak leaf, all right? And now on the other side of the paper, I'm gonna go ahead and do my pumpkin. Once you're done with embossing ink on a stamp, it's kind of a pain in the butt, it's so sticky. You just wanna go and take like mild dish soap like your Dawn and scrub it off of the stamp so it's not sticky anymore. Again, coming in carefully. Tap that nice and hard. If you notice some of the embossing powder is sort of sticking around where it shouldn't be, just use your finger and kind of swipe it off. Pumpkin is done. It almost looks wet. But the really cool thing about this is that the embossing powder is going to behave like a resist. So when you come in here and you start adding watercolor on top of it, it's just gonna kind of bead off and roll away from and it's gonna look ridiculously cool. Okay, so I'm going to put away all of the embossing powder stuff and come back with some watercolor. Okay, so I'm back with a small watercolor brush and a little water and my trusty little palette of colors here. And what I would suggest is that you start off just by adding little puddles of water kind of organically and just kind of keep in mind that there's a chance that you're going to sort of reactivate some of the coffee and that's okay. Just adds to the, the interest and whatnot. So I'm starting off with just a little bit of water sitting on the coffee dyed watercolor paper with my embossed image of the oak. 
And I'm gonna start off by picking up a little bit of green and kind of just dropping that into the areas that I dropped water into. And then I'll pick up a really contrasting kind of magenta color. Keep in mind that if you overwork, and by overwork that means stir the colors together too much, you're gonna get mud. Okay. So that is a perfect example of mud. I stirred them together too much up here and I got brown instead of having a very, very concentrated pocket of like say magenta. So I'm gonna drop in some magenta. It's a really vibrant color. And so it's gonna kind of take over the brown. And then I'm gonna splat a little bit in here too. Gonna pick up a little bit of kind of like a rusty burnt orange yellow color. I'm intentionally going over the edge of my stamp because so much of this stamp, having been embossed, is gonna behave as a resist. So you want some of that color to kind of swim out past the edge to really highlight and showcase the embossing design. And that will make more sense as this starts to dry. Right now it's just kinda all over the place. But the idea with this exercise is just to play. You know, just have fun. Just mix your colors together. Do orange and red and yellow and then do like blues and just be really adventurous. Just play. If you love these and you find that they've become something that you could see using. You can incorporate them into projects or um, you can use them as placeholders at your Thanksgiving table. You can send a card off to somebody, whatever. There are a million different uses for pretty little watercolor exercises. Sometimes it's just all about having something pretty on your fridge to look at. So I'm still sticking with the same three colors. I basically have my kind of rusty yellowy orange color and I've got my pretty magenta Bordeaux color as well as like an olive green. Another fun thing to do is to come in and just simply splat with water. You'd be surprised at some of the interesting more, uh, marks that it'll actually make. All right, so there's one. And we're just gonna carefully turn this. I'm not lifting it or tilting it because it will totally run and that, that's kind of gonna defeat the purpose of what I was going for. So for this one, let's go ahead and do a bit more on your classic orange pumpkin. And when you're looking at a pumpkin, they tend to be a little bit lighter at the top and that's because the sunshine is hitting the top of the pumpkin. So just kind of keeping those areas a little lighter at the top. And I'm able to do that by simply diluting the paint that's already there. I'm gonna pick up a slightly more vibrant, deeper orange color.
again, I'm kind of going intentionally off and out of the pumpkin here, letting it sort of bleed out. I'll splat in some of that color. And because I don't like to keep anything too much of any one color, I have to add in some other color variety in here. I'm just kind of throwing in a little bit of that olive green. And then we have a stem. You can go with a nice dark brown if you want to. come up here Again, I'm gonna be real careful not to turn it swiveling it over back to the oak leaf I can already see that it's drying beautifully I'm just gonna come in with a slightly darker green to splat and create a bit more interest in there I'll add a little bit of darker green detail in here. Kind of bring some of these details back to life that didn't necessarily show up with a lighter color. Okay. And then I'm gonna very carefully dry these up. I don't wanna blast them with hot air. I want to hold my heat tool probably one to two fists away. And when I say fists, I mean think one fist, two fist. You know what I mean? The two hands stuck away from, so you're, you're really up from your paper quite a bit. Tell. I'm not really crazy about this color right here in the corner, so I'm going to kind of blot some of that up with a paper towel. It was a little dark and muddy.
Okie dokie. So there you have these kind of organic and playful fall themed items. The coffee dyeing really, really lends itself to this whole fall theme. And it's just like a crispy old leaf just by itself, you know? And again, all the embossing stays shiny and clear, which is just beautiful. So then at this point, you can peel off your tape. And I always do it kind of pulling gently away from the paper. Don't pull towards the paper. So like here, I started off my tape here. I'm going to gently pull away so that I hopefully don't tear the paper. And go slow. The slower you go, the more likely you are to not tear your paper. So kind of just imagine if you had done each of these individually, had them taped down, and you had that pretty white border all the way around. So right now you only have it on three sides, right? If you had them all the way around, you could have an absolutely gorgeous little finished um, original painting for yourself. But it's not all lost, don't worry. I'm all about introducing new and fun stuff. So one of my favorite things is a ripped edge, but I wanna control my ripped edge. I don't want it to tear up something I don't want it to tear up, okay? So I've used this for years. Um, in the watercoloring world, when you want a deckled edged watercolor, when you want it to look like a rough edge, we have something called a dual edge ripper. And it's basically two different tears. On one side, it's a really controlled tear on the other, it's really ragged and more organic. I'm gonna go with the more control. And if I put it down where I wanna put it down and pull up and towards the funky edge, I ended up getting a really cool tear that I'm able to control, okay? So again, I'm gonna go ahead and do same thing here and I'm applying a fairly decent amount of pressure with my left hand holding the um, decal ruler down And there you have like this beautifully ripped little piece. I think I'm gonna go a little bit smaller actually because that's a lot on the sides. Yeah, much better. Keep in mind these little things, these little strips, these make fantastic decoupage elements. So I just bag stuff like that um, and use it again in projects. I mean, you could use these ones. I don't necessarily use the white ones because they're not as interesting to me, but. Let's do bigger on this one because it would sure be pretty if we stamped a word on it, I think. said sometimes it looks really pretty let's just to give you an example I'm gonna take and fold this piece of paper 
you know if you actually like put that down on a piece of white paper and then you could either frame that or you could make that a card whatever you want that would be really pretty but I will show you in just one second what I plan to do with mine all right so I grabbed my typeset um, stamp and I'm just going to stamp out my mom I think it's gonna be cutting it really close, but I think I can fit that one on for my mom. So we've got my mom there, and then I can do a shorter version for my kids because they have longer names. Next time I'll be more conscientious about like leaving room if I know it's gonna be a name. So I'll leave enough room around the edge. Okay. Whoop, got a munchkin coming in, hang on. Sorry about that. All right, so I've got one for my oldest, and then I have these. These are my absolute favorite, because I can swap out art on a regular basis, but these are going to be my little um, placeholders at Thanksgiving. Now, if you wanted to, you could simply have not done the name up at the top and you could have done the name in here but a lot of these place card things don't actually have this so obviously you can just kind of turn it and then you have the really fun little display for everybody's name your napkin and pretty plate and all of that good stuff but pretty pretty right and every single one of them made with love and just a little bit different so there you go, a nice, simple, playful watercolor exercise where we incorporated a couple of other different mediums. Aging our paper with coffee, splatter, using embossing powder, and watercolors. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I look forward to having you guys back again sometime. And everybody have a great day. Happy crafting.